Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to cover a few questions today off the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Now remember, the mathematical knowledge portion is not so much word problems as it is straight mathematical content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So number 21 is all about manipulating this equation to simplify it down into these terms. First and foremost, if you didn't know, when you divide by a fraction, it's actually the same thing as multiplying that fraction. So I'm going to rewrite this first one. 3x plus 15. But when you're switching this division to multiplying, which we need to do so that we can kind of get things to work out here, you can actually just flip this guy upside down and it turns this into multiplication. This is not just algebra, this is anytime whenever you're dividing by a fraction, flip it upside down and it just becomes multiplication. So that means I have an x squared minus 25 here, and on the bottom we now have x squared. Now we can start canceling things out. For example, I have an x squared down here and an x up here, so I can just take that x away and replace it with a 1. Now, I'm down to an x here, a 1 here. With these two, you actually got to factor things out first so that you can cancel her whole terms. In this case, there's a 3 can go into both of these, so I'm going to pull a 3 out, and that's going to leave me with x plus 5 on the inside. On here, this is a perfect square. So if I have x squared minus a perfect square, you can actually split that into two things of x plus whatever the square root of this guy is, which would be 5, and x minus whatever the square root of that guy is. Now notice, we have a plus 5 and a plus 5, so we cancel those out. Now we're ready to write our final thing. So we have 1 times x minus 5 on top, which is just going to be x minus 5. And on bottom, we have this 3, because this all canceled out to this, and we have an x, so we have 3x. That means our final answer here is going to be d, x minus 5 over 3x. So in 22, it says this diagram below, x is equal to what? And it gives us this x over here. So there's multiple things to keep in mind here. The number one is the fact that we need to find out these three angles will always add up to 180 because the angles inside of a triangle always add up to 180. Now with that said, we have another rule called the vertical angle theorem that says, hey, if you have an angle here and it makes a perfect x, then this side's angle is the same as this one, and this angle will be the same as this one. In this case, we don't care about these two angles. What we care about is this guy right here becoming 70. Now I know that I have 70 and 50, so to find this one, I can just do 180 minus those two. Well, 70 plus 50 is going to give me 120, so if I do 180 minus the 120, that's going to leave me with 60 degrees left over. So our final answer for this one should be 60 degrees. It looks like the answers were all the way up here, so it looks like that answer is going to be B. So number 23 says an airplane flies 50 miles due north. Let's just draw it out as we do it. They're going 50 miles due north. Then from there it says they turn and fly 120 miles due east. That means I'm turning right and going that way, 120. And they want us to know how far has the plane flown from its starting point. Well, you could be like, oh, well, they're going up 50 and then 120. No, they're talking about this diagonal here. How much is that going to be? So this is a Pythagorean theorem question where this is your 90 degree angle from turning from north to east and we need to find this missing side over here well we know that if there's a right triangle that we can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared where a is this side length b is this side length and c is going to be the length of the hypotenuse so that means we need to do a lot of squaring here without a calculator here we go well five times five is 25 and then you have a zero for each of those so that squared is going to give us 2500 12 squared is going to give you 144, and again, we have the two zeros to add on there. Now, if we add these two together, that's going to give us this c squared. So we have 0 and 0. We have another 0, 0. We have a 5 plus 4 is going to give me 9. And then we have a 2 plus 4, which is going to give me 6. And then we have just the 1 here and nothing down there, so it's 1. So that's going to be, what, 16,900? So which one of these when squared will give us that? Well, this is where knowing your squares might come in handy, like I have already used 5 squared and 12 squared. 169 also happens to be 13 squared. So that means our final answer here is B. 
24 is very much just a mathematical type question. It wants to know the slope of the line that goes through these two points. So your best way of dealing with this is identifying that the first number in each one of these is referred to as your x. The second number in each of these ordered pairs is referred to as your y. Because this is the first one, we're just going to label them both one. And this is the second point, so we'll label these both two. Now, the way that this works is there is a slope formula that says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 will give you the slope of the line that goes through these two points. But remember, slope is just rise or run as in like if you have a graph with a line, it's how far you go up and over to get back to your line. All right. So really, you could kind of visualize this, work through it a bunch of different ways. Let's go ahead and try this one out. If we're looking at this, y2 was 4 minus negative 2. And on the bottom, we have negative 4 minus 8. Meaning here, let's see, 4 minus negative 2. Well, if you have a negative and negative, that makes it a plus. So 4 plus 2 gives me 6. And on the bottom, negative 4 minus 8 would give me negative 12. And you could end up reducing this. Now, because it's positive on top, negative on the bottom, that means the whole thing is negative. If you have the same sign on top and bottom, then it's a positive fraction. If you have different signs on the top and bottom, then it's a negative fraction. And I could divide both the top and bottom by 6. In other words, reducing. So 6 divided by 6 is 1, and 12 divided by 6 is 2. So our final answer for slope here should be negative 1 over 2, which it looks like is option B. You gotta be careful on these practice tests, y'all. It says here in the figure below, the circle fits exactly inside the square. If the circumference of the circle is 10 pi, what is the area of the square? So multiple things you would need to know here. Number one, you need to know that the formula for a circumference is one of two things. I've seen it as two times the radius times pi. Or you could just say, well, 2 times the radius is just the whole way across, so that's the diameter times pi. So in this case, if they said the circumference is 10 pi, then that means 10 is the diameter, and then you have that pi. So that means from here all the way across is 10. Now here's where I have a problem, because if I'm looking for the area of this square, we do length times width. Well, if this right here is 10 and this is a square, then that makes this 10 as well. So we're looking at 10 times 10, which is 100. That's not an option, but that's the answer. So we have another mistake. After looking at the answer key for this, yes, I have an answer key, it says here that, oh, well, half of this is 5, so therefore the area of this square is 5 squared, giving you 25. But that's actually wrong because like this is not the length of the square. The whole thing is. So we have an issue here. The final answer should be 100. It's not on there. This is why you always should be checking your work, even if the test says otherwise. Just make sure. Hey, guys, that's all we're going to cover for today. But remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAB.